Alright, so we're back for our second session on the Pen Ambassadors Tour. And on the specific morning, it was one of those mornings where the water looked very good. Nice flat sea. Um, a bit of wind, so it gave the water a bit of, a bit of life. And it just looked like those type of sea where we could catch a few good fish. We found an area where there's a big deep trough with a few scattered banks at the back. And we just decided to stop there for a while and have a few throws. Hashal was persisting with his Sabil fast cast, racking up all the different species. And one species that you can get the Mozambique are Springer, but those big old Springer up to 10, 12 kilos. And Shal casted, hooked into this fish, and I immediately saw this fish was taking a lot of string and running out straight to sea. Well, I first thought it was, a, it was a nice cutter, but after the fish turned and swam straight back towards the shore, I recognized that behavior as a Springer. It's got smoky on a Sabil. Springer is one of those species you get up in Mozambique. There's not that many left on the South African coastline, so for us as anglers, it's always exciting to catch a big springer. And in Mozambique, they can grow quite big. I've seen them up to 10, 12 kilos, and Shoal was lucky enough to end up with one of those big springers. A springer is one of those species that die very quickly after you land it, so we quickly got it out the water, took a few snaps, got the hooks out, and put it back in the water. I think Shoal was ecstatic to land this fish. It's definitely a personal best for him, and by judging the smile on his face, his day was made. Now another, that same bait as a Springer, uh, two ounce of bill fast cast. 
Yeah, mate's working very well. Well, as it is up there in Mozambique, during a day you do a lot of spinning and there's a lot of small fish around. AJ was targeting that big fish and he's standing ready with his swim bait rod. And as soon as someone hooked a fish that he thought was big enough for him to swim, he was there to grab it and hook it and swim it out. It is always very difficult to get a decent hook set with a swim bait. And this specific bait that AJ had on was on the surface of water. It was swimming up and down in a lot of erratic movements. And when that shark grabbed the bait, I think it was just bad luck that he couldn't get the hook set. It was shaking the fish around. And for some reason that hook just didn't sit and AJ lost that fish. It was getting to this late afternoon stage of the day again and Gerard being the wise old master had his slide gear ready and the first guy that got the right size live bait from me grabbed it, pinned it on his slide rigs and put it out there. He obviously knew that if he had the bait in the water this time of the afternoon his opportunity to get a big GT on the live bait would be good. Alright so Gerard found this nice little hole in between the reeves. He obviously didn't want to slide his bait into the reef, so he put his sliding sinker in that little sand patch between the rocks. Nice little deep section and got the live out and he was patient and he knew he just had to wait and eventually someone was going to grab his live bait. There's always that golden hour in the afternoon, that hour before the sun drops, where those GTs come in to feed and that's generally your best time to put a live bait out and wait for that big GT on a live bait. Fishing at the Boon Point Lodge with a with a uh, pure fishing pen pen group, and um, oh, just a few reefs here, so I'll check it out quickly. Um, we didn't bother to bring sliding gear, and um, we're battling to get castable size baits. So I decided to try a bit of mono on my um, on my pin spin Fisher 8500, and I just got the thumbs up from Charles. I think I've got a GT on yeah. So my friend Jerome got a a nice big salad fish, and luckily I had my gear ready and uh, got the mono filament here on my my uh, spin Fisher grinder, so made it a bit easier. And it must have been about 10-15 minutes, and I got a bite. Always in with, uh, with a chance of a blackfin shark or a black tip reef shark or whatever yeah, when you're fishing these northern Mozambique areas. But uh, might be a young uh, GT, so let's hope for the best.
Guys, I'm totally chuffed. That's my trip made. Uh, beautiful GT. Um, when you target these big fish, you either fish big artificial baits or big live live baits. I mean, that's your uh, best options for success. So, uh, it's a nice big salad fish. Um, so the 10 minute wait, and there we go. This is the result. Beautiful king. Thanks, well, Gerard, it's no stranger to landing GTs. Um, this was a very nice fish, and Gerard is very happy with landing another one. After Harris released his GT, the sun was starting to set and some of the guys decided to do a bit of reef fishing in the dark. So we just stayed at exactly the same spot. There was a nice reef to the left of us and Jerome and Ibi, the two of them love their bait fishing. They're fishing in this one area and they're getting stuck into some nice reef species. and red eye bait, swim tight, nice fish. Well before the trip Jerome said to me one of the species he loves targeting in case they're in the stumpies and that's one of the species that like to catch up in Mozambique. We know they get nice and big up in Mozambique and Jerome did the right thing, he knew the baits, put the bait in the right area and he ended up catching a nice big Mozambican stump. Magic. Uh, got it on an Oki leg and red eye cutlets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on a 6, line, six oh inline circle look to the job. Well, 
Ibi was also fishing in the reef looking for different species, but it ended up catching a green spot again. We actually named him the green spot whisperer of the trip because if it was a green spot in the water, Ibi would catch it. After long hard days fishing, the boys decided to call it the night, go to the lodge and sit and relax and enjoy a cold beer. The next morning AJ woke up with his swim rod in his hand. Um, he was persistent, he was going to carry on trying to get a fish on swim bait. He had so many fish on and off and he wasn't going to give up on this. So we moved down the beach. And as luck would have it, we couldn't find a live bait for AJ. Eventually, one of the locals ended up catching a bonefish, and AJ was so desperate that he bought it with a guy and actually swapped his lunch for the bonefish, and that was AJ's swim bait for the day. Uh, I got a little bonefish from the locals, so I'm quickly putting a slide to the uh, swim trace on my cotton mouth. It's actually not ideal, but it's very still on the lures. So we have to do something to get a bite. Well after AJ got the bonefish from the local, he got very excited and AJ himself knew that a bonefish is a very very good bait. He was full of confidence, he had a good bait and he decided to put that li live bait out to see if his luck can change. When fishing with a swim bait or a live bait, there's a few methods you can use in order to increase your chances of getting a bite. Um, one method we often use is to let the swim bait swim out, your live bait, let it swim out as far as you want it. Normally not too far, you want to keep it in the strike zone where you think or perceive the sharks to be or your GTs to be. Um, so you let it swim out and then you hold that live bait. And as soon as you hold that live bait or swim bait, it starts panicking and it gives off signals. And by giving off signals of panic, it attracts the game fish or the sharks to your swim bait and it increases your chance of getting a bite. quite bad here and AJ is in his barefoot and I don't think that's um, that's gonna cut it today on these reefs. <laughs> Edges fish actually ended up on top of the reef. Um, it's a very uh, sharp reef with some barnacles and oysters on it. 
So Shoal just grabbed the leader line and just assisted um, AJ to get the fish over the reef onto the safer side into the bay where he could land the fish nice and safely. Finally, AJ landed his blackfin. He was a very happy man, and it seemed like the back to back hooks was the answer. He had the right bait, the right trace, and everything worked out well for him at the end. During this period it became very quiet, the, the bites went away, so the guys decided to move a bit down south and go look for live bait again. While it was that time of the afternoon, sort of late afternoon, we all know that that's a good time of the afternoon to put out live baits, Shoal managed to get a nice live bait, he put it out and he hooked into a very nice fish. Goose was there to assist Shoal, he walked into the water, he leaded the fish, got it into a safe zone and they landed it. Well although Shoal has caught many sharks in his life, a blackfin shark is one of those species he doesn't often get the opportunity to catch down in the cape, so if, although it was a smaller shark he was still very happy with his catch. So at the end of the day it was an excellent trip, it was a nice team building session, all the guys had fun, a lot of laughters, a lot of fish being landed, a lot of fish being hooked and lost, but an excellent trip and I'm sure the guys will remember it for a very very long time. Yeah.